Hey guys, welcome to the April 7th Striper Migration Update from On The Water. Before we get into the nitty gritty of this fishing report, uh, just a little personal fishing report. This weekend, I was up fishing for another beloved migratory fish in Western New York, the steelhead. Uh, and it was a good trip, it was a decent trip. The steelhead this time of year, like the striped bass, they're migrating into rivers to spawn, rainbow trout and steelhead, which are the lake run or sea run versions of the rainbow trout, spawn in the springtime in rivers, same rivers where they were spawned, which is exactly what the striped bass are just starting to do in the Chesapeake Bay. But right now the Chesapeake Bay is closed to striped bass fishing. It's gonna give those fish a chance to spawn. The Maryland DNR did report some spawning activity this week, but they're expecting the bulk of the striped bass spawning in the Chesapeake tributaries to get going next week. And as soon as they're finished with that, those big stripers are gonna head out of the Chesapeake Bay, hang a left and head toward us up here in the Northeast. Working our way up the coast to Southern New Jersey, there's some pretty good striped bass fishing happening in the backwaters of Atlantic, Cape May, and Ocean Counties. Now these are mostly resident fish. You might have some migratory fish arriving and moving into the inlets, but right now the warmest water is in the bays and the striped bass are in there. They're feeding on spearing, grass shrimp, and fishermen are having the best luck fishing small soft plastics, small swimming plugs uh, around the sod banks after dark, sometimes around the bridges. And that fishing, I grew up doing that fishing. I used to fish a lot of the bridges in South Jersey. And March, early April was some of the best fishing of the year. Uh, you would get there and sometimes the fish would be lined up in the shadow lines, uh, just waiting for you to sweep a finesse fish on a half or quarter ounce jig head right past their noses. Now, most of these fish have been schoolies. So fish in like the 18 to 24 inch range, but they're starting to see some more slot size fish up to about 33 inches being caught in the backwaters. Now, stripers are being caught in the Delaware River as well. You have striped bass from schoolie size up to big 40 to uh, 45 inch fish moving up the Delaware, getting ready to spawn. And I know some fishermen who've been seeing them while they're targeting shad or catfish or some other uh, of the Delaware River species this time of year. Now, the harvest of striped bass in the Delaware River is closed. It closed on April 1st. It's going to remain that way until June 1st. So if you do catch any stripers in the Delaware River, make sure you release them. Take good care of those fish. Leave them in the water while you're unhooking them. It's a very important time of year for these striped bass. The females are going to be loaded with eggs. They're getting ready to spawn. So those are the future generations. And those fish, those Delaware River fish, those are our fish that hang out in New Jersey. A lot of them will be residents. Some of the biggest fish we'll see in South Jersey every year are from that Delaware River stock. So we have to take good care of them. If you're fishing the Delaware for stripers this year, consider using barbless hooks or inline single hooks and take good care of those big striped bass so they keep coming back to spawn and that Delaware River striped bass stock stays strong. Skipping all the way up to New Jersey's other big bay, the Raritan, it sounds like the fishing there is as good as it gets right now. Wave after wave of striped bass, we've heard of them up to 50 pounds hitting Raritan Bay. And not only is it big fish, you've got quantity and quality. It is just an exceptional world-class fishery. And like I just said, for the Delaware River, these fish are all pre-spawn. They are fattening up on the bunker, all the bunker that have come into the bay over the last few weeks. The stripers are in there. The water temperatures are just right for them to start feeding on these big baits. So they're fattening up, storing up their energy to make their run up the Hudson River to begin spawning. Now, there's no spawning happening in the Hudson just yet. That usually happens toward the back half of this month, toward April and into May. So those bass are all thick as thieves in the Raritan. Uh, guys are catching them from shore, from boats, from kayaks. One of the most popular ways to catch them from the kayak the last couple of years is to troll a big metal lift swimmer that looks just like some of these bunker. And uh, I've never done that from a kayak. I've done a fair amount of fishing big metal lifts from the surf. And the way stripers hit these big metal lifts just makes it some of the most fun fishing you can do. They absolutely smash it. I can imagine the trolling one of these in a kayak, when a big fish hits it, it's got to practically just spin it right around. Now we are just past the full moon and that's a lot of the reason that the fishing has broken wide open in the Raritan. It's why we're seeing a flood of fish going up the Delaware River. So as the fishing may wane a little bit as we move away from this full moon and the tides go back from the, the spring strong tides to the neap tides in between the moons. But with that new moon coming up in the middle of the month, things are going to really dial up to 11, I think. To finish this report and take it the rest of the way up the coast, I'm going to kick it over to our assistant editor, Matt Hefner. He's going to talk about Long Island and beyond for where the 2023 spring striped bass migration stands. Thank you, Jimmy, for covering the southern range of the striper migration so far. 
Uh, no disappointing talk about steelhead here. We're going to go right into the Long Island fishing and how uh, people have been catching stripers up on the island so far this season. Little debate I've been having in the office this week. Um, is lure color really that important? And it seems for anglers, at least in northern New Jersey and Long Island right now, that the lure color does make a difference. Um, we have a lot of reports coming in of people catching on yellow, yellow plugs, like swimming minnow plugs, um, Daiwa SP minnows, Shimano Colt Sniper, Yozuri Hydro minnows, things of that nature. And I, I would be remiss if I skipped over the Joe Bag Swarter. Um, the Chicken Scratch Swarter has been crushing it, especially for Brandon White's from Causeway Bait and Tackle uh, up on the North Shore this past week. Um, there's something about yellow. I don't know. Maybe it's when those bunker are around. They have a little bit of tinge of gold to them, so that might be making a difference. It's all up for debate. Um, you can debate that with your friends and have a little fun with that this week. It's also worth mentioning that my new acquaintance, Mr. Poseidon Fishing, I'm sure you've either seen him on Instagram or YouTube. He gave me a great report earlier this week of stripers north of the George Washington Bridge heading up the river. Um, there were 20 to 30 pound class fish. A lot of guys having success on bloodworms, but they were also biting plugs. It's a safe bet that those fish are going up there to spawn. In the weeks to come, they'll be catching them on the way back out. On the eastern end of Long Island, we are seeing a lot of holdovers uh, being caught up in the rivers and the salt ponds. Um, further west, though, the bite is pretty hot. On the north and south shores, there's a lot of uh, holdover activity and some migrators starting to trickle in. So the south shore is seeing a good push of fish that are in the 24 to 30 inch range, while on the north shore, there are some larger resident fish that have kind of been sticking around, um, probably waited it out throughout the winter, and now they're becoming active with these mild temperatures we're having this week. Now, even though the east end of Long Island is going to be primarily holdover striped bass fishing for this time of year, there are some early signs of migratory fish in the reports this week. Tim Regan, who writes our Eastern Long Island and Suffolk County fishing report, actually said that there are rumors of small striped bass swimming out in the surf. Um, that is totally possible. We have a lot of uh, herring trickling into the waters across the northeast to places like Cape Cod, Rhode Island, the Connecticut rivers, and now Long Island as well. Now, Connecticut's tidal rivers have been giving up holdover stripers all winter long, but as we start to see temperatures increase and the presence of bait species increase in these rivers, the stripers are going to be feeding a lot heavier, and we're also going to start seeing activity from a lot smaller fish than we're used to. On the east end of Long Island, for example, there are tons of spearing being reported right now in the back bays. Those muddy flats and salt ponds, they heat up really quick, and that's going to attract a lot of these smaller forage that stripers will feed on early in the season. Now, spearing aren't necessarily one of those fish that, uh, one of those bait species that people look for early in the season, but for the fly guys, they love when they see that around because it means that stripers are not always looking for a big plug in the beginning of the season. A little bit to the northeast, we have Johnny Rigo and Dustin Stevens of Rhode Island Kayak Fishing Adventures. They've been out targeting the holdovers for about the past two months, I'd say, and they've been finding some good fishing. Although there are a lot of small fish, recent reports of squid trickling into the area have anglers hopeful for a big plug bite. Start pulling out those metal lip swimmers and top waters because things are about to heat up really quickly, especially after the week of weather we have ahead. It looks like we got a lot of 50 and 60 degree temperatures, even in some places along the coast. So those stripers are going to be continuing their spawning activity and moving on up the coast towards Cape Cod, Rhode Island, and Connecticut. Up on Cape Cod and across the rest of Massachusetts, some of the holdovers are active in the rivers. Also, the salt ponds on the south side of Cape Cod have been giving up some nice fish for anglers that are creeping in the backwaters at night. Um, a lot of small soft plastics have been uh, proving most successful for those guys. The forage base is pretty much mud minnows, spearing, glass minnows, things like that. And because of all those small baits, guys have been seeing a lot of success on uh, three to four inch paddle tails. Things like the quarter ounce and three quarter ounce no live bait needed paddle tails are, are really productive in the salt ponds and backwaters this time of year, assuming you can get to the bottom with them. Um, if you can't, something a little bit bigger with a larger profile will, uh, will go a long way, especially because we have tons of herring in the water right now. Cape Cod uh, is seeing a massive push of herring. I was out last night, a little anecdotal information for you, um, and had a lot of fish swimming into my line. Felt like bunker to me. I'd never really seen this amount of herring before in my life. Um, and prior to moving up to Cape Cod, I heard a lot about the herring runs they got and how much stronger they were than you know places like Long Island, where I used to live. Um, we do get them down on Long Island, and they're trickling into those waters now. But last night, the herring were so thick, you could literally scoop them up with your hand if you wanted to. But you can't, and you shouldn't, because harvesting herring is actually illegal. Um, they are no longer allowed to be used as bait, and uh, as much as that stinks for a lot of the old salts up here, they're a protected species. With the herring flooding into waters across New England, we're even getting reports from Maine of good holdover striped bass fishing. But 
we'd rather be targeting the early season migrators, which hopefully in the next week should be arriving in southern New England. Last year, we got a report on April 14th or 15th from my buddy Stavros Viglas on Martha's Vineyard. He was fishing the south side of the vineyard with bucktails and uh, fishing the open surf. Got a lot of nice fish. So um, we're expecting the fish to arrive earlier, if not on that same exact date this year. As the striper migration continues over the course of the next few months, we're going to keep you up to date with this striper migration map. We also want you to keep us up to date. So tag us on Instagram at On The Water Magazine. Tag us on Instagram at Striper Cup. And if you haven't already done so, sign up for Striper Cup at StriperCup.com. The rules are all posted. It starts on May 1st, but you can sign up afterwards. It's just a way to have a little extra fun catching striped bass throughout the course of the season. Thanks again for following along with our weekly striper migration updates. And check back in next week for another striper migration report from On the Water.